Hello there. What's going on, everybody? Today, we're going to be talking about Armada, its future, and why I believe it's pretty bright. Uh, I'm going to be talking about a lot of concerns, rumors, and uh, a lot of things that are going around in the buzz of Armada right now, because I think this is a good time to address things. It's been kind of a rough 2020 for Fantasy Flight and Asmodee so far, and uh, it's led a lot of people to have some serious questions about this game's future. So I'm going to be talking all about that today. Uh, caveat, I'm not an official spokesperson for Asmodee or FFG or anything like that. So everything I say is really just me, a dude, talking to you, you know, somebody else. Uh, you know, But I'll, I'll give, do my best to explain my reasoning for what I'm talking about, as well as there might be a little bit of a sprinkling of official FFG news in here as well. So... Uh, Stay tuned for that. So we're going to be uh, talking about this. Let me also remind you guys, there's still time left to enter to win the giveaway. All you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos, and then you could win a $25 Amazon gift card. I typically announce winners at the end of my videos, so make sure you watch all the way through. So let's talk about Armada, because like I said, it has been a rough 2020. There have been a number of just unfortunate things that have happened. Uh, you know, with all the rumors that Asmodee may be looking to sell to a different investment group. Uh, and then, you know, there's been a lot of tightening up, trimming of the fat, things like that. Um, a lot of layoffs, which has a lot of people worried. Anytime there's layoffs, that's always, first off, it stinks because a lot of people end up losing their jobs. A lot of people out of work. Uh, there have been a lot of people that have left the company, uh, and that is certainly uh, cause for some eyebrow raises at least, uh, you know, so like it has a lot of people wondering what's really going on, myself included. Uh, but also there have been some product cancellations. We saw a lot of stuff being canceled with games like X-Wing. Uh, we, we've seen entire games get canceled. You know, Destiny is, is, has been shut down. And Armada certainly has a slow enough news and or release schedule that it has people wondering, well, do they think this game is profitable? Do they think that this game is worth continuing to make? Um, you know, and, and, and uh, with already the Clone Wars... Uh, be, have, be having been announced for Star Wars Armada, but we're already so far from, uh, you know, when we haven't gotten any official release or uh, official news yet, you know, f like as far as an actual preview, all we know is that it's being worked on, which is great, but, you know, wh what's, what's the plan there? So I am happy to report that FFG has told me themselves, direct from marketing, that the Clone Wars has not been affected by all of these layoffs. The Clone Wars is still set to release on time and without interruption, at least as of, you know, I think this was about a month ago when I talked to them. This was before coronavirus and all of that stuff happened. So granted, that may have been, you know, the plan, and that's certainly a good thing, but the fact that a lot of factories are ha have shut down and are shutting down, uh, especially in China where most of the, everything is, is produced, um, there could still be some delays. That's just speculation. But the thing is, if there are delays, they're not going to be Armada specific. They're going to be across the board. So if everything in the world gets delayed, obviously Armada would be one of those. So while they are still shooting for a quarter four release, probably December, probably very end of the year, uh, I, at this point, with as much stuff as backlogged and is going on with coronavirus stuff, I would not be surprised if... There are those delays end up impacting things like Armada. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if board games as a whole get all the tabletop gaming stuff that's produced in China gets, uh, you know, like a domino effect. You know, you everything being produced, if one factory shuts down, another factory shuts down, when they finally start opening them back up, they may have a backlog already. You know, tabletop games might not be at the top of priority. There could be medical supplies and other things, you know, who knows, that obviously have to get pushed out first, they get rushed through. There could be a domino effect to that. So honestly, with all of the coronavirus stuff that's going on right now, it's very difficult and I would say impossible to accurately predict what is going to happen over the next 12 months as far as production, shipping, arrival, and distribution and getting stuff into your hands. Um, but since we really can't predict that, all we can do is talk about what we do know. And we do know uh, that FFG is still planning on moving forward with Star Wars Armada. They are still planning to release the Clone Wars. Uh, it's still planned, planned to be a quarter four release. Again, if it's delayed, then it gets delayed. But 
hasn't been yet, at least not officially. So that's certainly a good thing. Um, and that's far enough out where it might not even see, you know, might not even see any interruption at all. Um, and at least, the, you know, the last time I was able to talk to marketing about this, that was the official response. So that's really good. That's optimistic news for me because, hey, weren't we all kind of worried a little bit, I mean, especially when Destiny got canceled? So, but uh, I, I think a lot of people are still kind of worried about that because, well, what happens if, you know, they do change their mind or whatever? Well, I also kind of want to talk about the future of Armada past that because something kind of cool happened today. So I was up at my local game store, and if you guys don't already know, I do uh, dabble a little bit in the Star Wars role-playing game. And uh, well, a cool little title just recently came out called Starships and Speeders. And while I'm not going to spoil this book for you, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the really cool stuff that is mentioned in this book. Now this book is awesome. It's a collection of all the starships and speeders and, and vehicles and, and all kinds of really cool stuff. Like, honestly, I could do videos upon videos just about this. It's it's almost all starships. There's, you know, the few, a few ground-based things. It's almost all starships. And a lot of it is capital starships. And why is that important? Well, Star Wars Armada has certainly got a lot vested in capital starships. Um, I'll tell you this, there is new artwork of the Braha Tok class uh, gunship. The Dornian gunship is certainly in here. Um, and, and the thing is, if they're com here's the thing. We know from games like this, they, they, they commission artwork. They use artwork in multiple places, right? Not only was this a Victory Star Destroyer, uh, this was also the cover of the box, right? It was also on the rule book. You're going to see card, uh, you know, images like this reflected in multiple places so it seems to me that if they've already got the artwork they're probably also already you know like i mean they're commissioning artwork they didn't have to do dornian granted dornian gunships are popular they didn't have to do that um there there's the arrestor cruiser in here which they named the cantwell class arrestor cruiser named for colin cantwell who was the actual original concept artist for the Arrestor Cruiser, as well as a lot of other original, like people think Ralph Ralph McQuarrie did everything, but like so there's other people too. Uh, Colin Cantwell designed a lot of these ships. Uh, he had original Star Destroyer stuff too. Very cool. But uh, yeah, so that stuff is really awesome. Um, but there's a lot of other things in here, and without I don't want to spoil all of it, but there's things like um, the. Dreadnought class heavy cruiser. I mean, like you, you honestly, you got to get this book. There's a Dreadnought class heavy cruiser in here. Um, there is there's DP twenties. There is oh my uh, indulgent class luxury starliner. Like I, I, I I'm, I'm blown away by this. You guys are some of you guys are really gonna like this. Um, the MC forty, MC forty is in here, right, dude. And there's and there's so much more. There's there there's so much more. So I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't want to ruin too much. Um, but if you like ships and speeders and all of this stuff, like this, like even if you don't play the Star Wars RPG, maybe this is a great buy for you. Definitely pick up starships and speeders. There's a whole lot of art that went into this, but there's a whole lot of thought and mechanics and stuff that went into this too. And there's certainly a lot of. Sh um, similarity between a ship's capability in the RPG as well as the overall ship's design concept for Star Wars Armada, they obviously have a lot in common. So I feel like with all of the new ships that are in here that are basically, if Lucasfilm approved Fantasy Flight to you know talk about and get artwork done and print these things, it stands to reason they'll probably also approve it to be in Star Wars Armada, right? Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. I'd love to hear what you guys think because this is just, this is a treasure trove of information. There's there's ships in here I've never even heard of that I have to go look up now. Um, and, and, oh man, there's stuff in here that's gonna get you guys really excited. That's all I, I can really say. It's, oh, like, I know I'm just gonna, I'm gonna videotape myself just like thumbing through the pages. Oh, oh the Starhawk is in here too, by the way, which is really cool. Um, yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's so good. And, and for the, for the most part, I'm going to say this. Um, it looks like this is really not talking about the Clone Wars. This is pretty much, uh, you know, Galactic Civil War timeframe stuff. I mean, there are some Clone Wars things in here. Uh, and obviously, you know, we, you know that there's 
you know, some ships that are, you know, common between both timelines. But, uh, like, it seems like this is this is primarily Galactic Civil War time frame stuff, which is awesome. Because that means, I mean, we know that there's a wealth of stuff they can do for Clone Wars. But there's a whole lot of, if, if you just like Rebels and Empire and want more for that, you're probably going to find lots of really interesting stuff in here. And I've only read, like, maybe the back third of this book so far. So, I guess my point is... Uh, it seems like there's at least the potential for a very bright future for Star Wars Armada, and uh, you know, and some of you guys worrying about the, the the RPG because there was some rumors that the RPG was going away. It's not. There should be a, an announcement coming soon related to that. Now I don't usually cover the RPG that much, but uh, I think it's certainly relevant, and I certainly talk about the RPG because I you know I, I've been playing it for a little while now. I'm getting more and more comfortable with it. But I don't know if I'm at the point where I want to start doing like regular video coverage of the Star Wars RPG. I'll do like occasional things, but it's a fantastic system. It's a lot of fun, and uh, things like this are are really the way they connect to everything else and uh, in all of the Star Wars gaming universe. Super excited. So that's all I've got for today. I just wanted to get, like hopefully cheer some of you guys up if you guys were worried at all. I think that Armada's got a really bright future, so it's an exciting time. Now, if only they could get all of those ships reprinted and in stock so people can stop having to pay $100 for an Architans, that would be awesome. All right, guys, thank you so much for sticking with me throughout this. I want to thank my patrons as well. You guys are absolutely amazing, so uh, stay tuned for some more giveaways coming up to Patreon probably later this week, and these are going to run alongside slide the month-long uh, giveaway for the uh, Clone Wars Legion corset, which is also going up on Patreon right now, but we'll throw some, we'll throw some promos on there as well to kind of uh, be some layered giveaways as well. So I want to thank you again. Uh, thank all of you so much. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And uh, make sure to click that subscribe button. If you'd like to click the bell for alerts to be notified when new stuff comes out, you can do that as well. There's links to all my social media and Patreon in the description below. And as always, have a great day.